so before going to the numerical of uh, belt drive i would like to discuss few more things which i left in the previous video one is your uh, types of belt as you can see here we have four figures so the first category is known as your uh, flat belt okay flat belt this second category is your v belt this one is your rope belt and this category is rope belt with several group several grouped pulley okay they are used depending upon the different applications uh, here you can see in the flat belt the <coughs> rim of the pulley is slightly made of crown shaped okay it is not completely flat the rim is of crown shaped okay crown rim and this has been done in order to facilitate the position of the belt firm on the rim surface if it is completely flat then there is chance that it may get slip okay, laterally so in order to avoid that it is made of crown shaped okay uh, you may get short notes on this why the rim of the flat <coughs> belt pulley is made of crown shaped and here in the v belt you can see there is a v shaped grooved uh, is provided in the rim of the pulley so that uh, the v belt will be fitted uh, completely inside and there is a gap between the lower surface of the belt and the uh, rim surface so that there won't be much friction okay because this side friction is sufficient enough to transmit the power okay uh, <coughs> and here in a rope belt you can see this is of circular cross section so a circular groove is provided and if you are using more than one rope a uh, belt several groups can be uh, made on the same pulley so that we can accommodate number of uh, rope belts on it now there are certain <coughs> advantages of v belt okay advantages of v belt what are they first is <coughs> Uh, they are suitable for such suitable for shorter distance there is no uh, joint <coughs> trouble as v belts are endless okay and the operation operation is smooth and quiet then fourth one is high velocity ratio high velocity ratio in the order of 10 up to 10 can be obtained can be obtained in v belt then uh, multiple v uh, belt drive increases the power transmission in case of uh, uh, you know, if you provide more than one uh, group then multiple uh v belt drive increases the 
increases the power transmission okay can be easily installed sixth one is can be easily installed and removed removed okay now there are certain disadvantages as well in case of b belt disadvantages first is cannot used for larger center distance can't used used for larger center distance then a construction of pulley is not simple construction of pulley is not simple then <coughs> costlier as compared to flat belt costlier compared to flat belt okay <coughs> so these are the few categories another correction i would like to tell you regarding that ratio of tension in my previous video that this t1 by t2 uh, i told you ln t1 by t2 is equal to e to the power mu theta but it is actually t1 by t2 is equal to e to the power mu theta remember this okay ratio of tensions remember this formula okay then another important aspect is law of belting law of belting what is this that it states that the center the center line of the belt of the belt when it approaches when it approaches approaches a pulley pulley must lie must lie in the mid plane in the mid plane Uh, of that pulley of that pulley of that pulley okay this is the law of belting you should remember this then uh, we will do certain uh, okay now <coughs> another thing left is your b belt or rope in b belt or rope belt remember that let's say uh, first we'll draw the schematic of a b belt this is the group of b belt and this is the belt okay this is the gap between the belt and the rim 
now let me hatch this portion indicating the belt part and this r represents the normal reaction to this inclined plane okay which is at an angle alpha with horizontal so from this side also there will be reaction r with an angle alpha with horizontal and this angle will of course be 2 alpha so the total uh, normal reaction acting in upward direction is 2 r sin alpha okay similarly for your rope belt if you draw the schematic let's say this is tension in the tire slack side t2 and this one is the tension in the tight side that is t1 and there is a small angle of lap or wrapping of angle del theta okay angle del theta so um, if you draw a tangent here and here it will be equal to let's say the tension is t here and this angle will be del theta by 2 okay and here also tension is t plus del t amount okay and angle is del theta by 2 okay and this angle is del, del theta total so <coughs> For a small angle, I am telling, okay, not alpha. Total angle will be say total angle of lap is say two alpha. Okay, so in <coughs> here, if you find the ratio of uh, tensions, so it will be T one by T two is equal to e to the power mu theta by sine alpha remember this this is the ratio of tension for v belt as well as for rope belt okay <coughs> now we'll do some problems let's say uh, first problem is say example 1 here it has been given that a shaft runs at 80 rpm and drives another shaft at 150 rpm through bell drive the diameter of the driving pulley is 600 mm determine the diameter of the driven pulley okay in the following cases first case there is uh, belt thickness is uh, neglected and in the second case t is taken as 5 mm in the third case uh, assuming a total slip of 4 percent and in the fourth case you are assuming 2 percent slip in each pulley 
okay so uh, the data given to us um, that your n1 is 80 rpm n2 speed of the driven pulley or driven shaft is 150 rpm diameter of the driving pulley d1 okay d1 is 600 mm okay. so we will consider the first case to find out the diameter of the driven pulley so we have this relation for the velocity ratio n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 okay so i can write this as 150 by 80 is equal to 600 by d2 so if you solve this you will get d2 is equal to 320 mm simple okay and in the second case it is telling um, belt thickness t is given 5 mm so in that case the equation will be n2 by n1 is equal to d1 plus t divided by d2 plus t right so uh, you have uh, 150 by 80 is equal to d1 is 600 plus 5 divided by d2 plus 5. So, if you solve this, you will get d2 is equal to 317.7 mm. You please check it, okay. There may be some corrections in the answer then in the third case So, in the third case, as you can see here, uh, your n2 by n1, third case, n2 by n1 is equal to d1 plus t divided by d2 plus t into 1 minus s by 100. So, substitute all the values, you have 150 by 80 is equal to uh, 600 plus 5 divided by uh, D2 plus 5 into 1 minus point zero 0.04. Okay. So, if you solve it, you will get D2 equal to uh, three zero four point eight mm. Right. <coughs> and in the second case, uh, you'll have both S one and S two is equal to two percent slip is given to you. So, uh, your equation will be n2 by n1 is equal to d1 plus t divided by d2 plus t 1 minus s1 by 100 okay, into 1 minus s2 by 100. So, in that case, <coughs> Uh, let us say the equivalent slip will be S1 plus S2 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 pl
plus S2 minus point zero one S1 S2 S1 S2. So, this equation can be rewrite as N2 by N1 is equal to D1 plus T divided by D2 plus T into 1 minus S by 100. Okay. <coughs> so, you substitute the value of S1, S2 here. So, this S will give you 3.96. Okay. So, substitute here 3.96 and you will find D2 equal to 304.9 mm okay now uh, let's say another problem is given to you Let us say this is example 2. So, two parallel shafts connected by a crossed belt are provided with pulleys. Uh, D1 is 480 mm, D2 is given 4, 650, 640 mm in diameter. The distance between the center x is 3 meter, you can see here. Then find how much the length of the belt should be changed if it is desired to alter the direction of rotation of the driven shaft. Okay. Now, in case of cross belt, if I show you the schematic, Let us say um, we have this driving pulley and this is the driven pulley. Okay. This is the cross belt. So, belt will wrap like this. Here I told you about the angle of wrap in previous class. Okay. So, it may in some books it is denoted by alpha or in some books it is denoted by beta. So, do not get confused in that. Okay. So, here we have uh, D 1 is given 
d1 is uh, r in terms of larger pool if you take let us say capital R will be 640 by 2. So, it is 320 mm and small r will be 480 by 2 that is 240 mm and the center distance x is given 3 meter ok. Now, <coughs> this angle beta if you find this will be actually sin inverse of r plus r divided by x ok. Remember this. So, <coughs> this beta will be sin inverse of 0 0.32 plus 0 0.24 divided by 3 or you can say this beta is uh, approximately 10.45 degree ok. So, <coughs> now what will be the value of cos beta? Cos beta will be 0 0.9825 ok. So, length of cross bell drive length of cross bell drive is actually pi plus 2 beta into r plus r plus 2 c cos beta ok you can use either formula uh, you will get the same result. So, if you solve this you will get the answer as 7.865 meter ok. <coughs> and for open bell drive belt drive this beta will be sin inverse of sin inverse of r plus r divided by x. So, you will get beta as one point three two degree one point three two degree ok. So, the length of open bell drive will be pi r plus r plus r minus r square divided by x ok. Here, uh, I have written here C because in some cases C is also denoted as uh, the dist uh, distance of uh, between the axis of uh, shaft or you can write x here ok. <coughs> so, uh, plus 2 x ok. So, this will give you a value equal to 7.761 meter ok. So, the length of the belt should be reduced by length of the belt should be reduced by your L c minus L o length of cross belt minus length of open belt. So, it is 0 0.104 meter ok. 
<coughs> now another problem if we solve A belt runs over a pulley of 800 uh, mm diameter at a speed of uh, 180 rpm. The angle of lap is given 165 degree and the maximum tension that is T1 is 2 kilo Newton. Determine the power transmitted if the coefficient of friction mu is given 0.3. Okay. Now, here uh, let us say this is example 3. Here. Uh, given data T1 is given uh, 2000 Newton, uh, D is given 0 0.8 meter, N is 180 rpm, mu is 0.3. Okay. So, th theta will be uh, angle of lap is given 165 degree. So, 165 you have to convert that into radian. So, 165 divided into multiply with pi by 180. So, it is 2.88 radian. Okay. <coughs> so, linear velocity will be pi d n by 60 pi d n by 60. So, pi multiply with 0 0.8 into 180 divided by 60 will give you 7.54 meter per second. Okay. Now, a ratio of tensions T 1 by T 2 is equal to e to the power mu theta we know. So, it is e to the power uh, 0.3 into 2.88. Okay. So, <coughs> this will give you a relation that T 1 is equal to uh, 2.37 T 2. Now, we have this T 1 is equal to 2000 is equal to 2.37 T2 that means your T2 is 843 Newton. Okay. So, the power formula for power P is equal to T1 minus T2 into B. So, 2000 minus 843 into V is 7.54, 7.54. Okay, so this will give you 8.724 kilowatt. Okay. <coughs> Similarly, you can solve. <coughs> Uh, problems related to power transmission. <coughs> 